Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today's question that I'll be discussing is what is GAT? For those of you new to the channel, my name is Dr. B with Dr. B Addiction Recovery. Uh, on this channel, we discuss all kinds of things, substance abuse. Please scroll through the videos. If you do like the content we have to offer, press the subscribe and like button. And for everybody watching, uh, we would love it if you go onto our Patreon account. And for as little as $3 a month, you can contribute to the developing this channel as currently it is funded by our nonprofit program, American Addiction Institute of Mind and Medicine. Uh, let's get started. Uh, so today uh, is pretty cool because uh, we're gonna discuss uh, the first entry into our deep dive into stimulants. And I thought quite a bit about this and uh, I know that I wanted to start with the classes of uh, amphetamines and methamphetamines and all things related. And uh, interestingly, uh, this discussion, what is GAT, is related. Uh, well, it is a plant. It is a flowering evergreen uh, plant that grows in the Horn of Africa and Southwest Arabian Peninsula. And you may ask, okay, that's great. What does this have to do with amphetamines, methamphetamines, and so forth? You will see after I describe it how important this plant is into understanding the new, uh, it's not so new now, but the designer drug market, including bath salts, the designer psychoactive substances, uh, which at this point, there are hundreds of them, new ones being formulated every day, it is extremely difficult to control from a law enforcement perspective, regulatory perspective, and one of the ones that many of you may have heard of is bath salts. And all of these, or a good chunk of these, are related to this plant, which has stimulant amphetamine-like effects. So, and it is also used, uh, and it is in Europe and the United States. So let's get started to understand all of this. Oh, one other thing before we get started, uh, as I mentioned, uh, to understand uh, the sort of designer drug, uh, des designer uh, psychotropic uh, uh, hallucinogenic drugs, uh, you have to understand GAT and the history of it and how it's related. And, you know, these drugs are huge. Uh, you know, as uh, these are sometimes called legal highs. Uh, they aim to produce cocaine and amphetamine like pharmacological effects. As I said, one of them that you know of is bath salts. And if you look at the labels of these, I've seen a lot of these. I've taken care of a lot of these patients in the emergency department, which I'll get into. You know, they're often labeled as not for human consumption, plant food, or bath salts. And this is a big deal. So we'll get into that uh, by the next video. We'll touch on it here and see how this is all related. And it's also related to the history of amphetamines. So it's, it's going to be quite interesting so let's get uh, started uh, uh, for as I said uh, 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 the origins of the plant um, uh, are often argued actually uh, we do know where it's found but the origins of the plant are often argued many many scholars it looks like think that uh, it, it's Ethiopian others argue Yemen these are the two main areas where this stuff is really produced by bulk and distributed in the local areas. In fact, I believe it's still legal in Ethiopia, okay? Um, the nearby countries that you can find this stuff, like I said, Arabia, Kenya, Somalia, Uganda, um, Tanzania, uh, Malawi, Congo, Zambia, Zimbabwe, even South Africa, even i believe it is found in afghanistan and turkestan okay so uh, uh it's quite widespread in that area and you'll soon see why it hasn't spread uh, uh so it hasn't spread as rapidly and become a problem in the west for so many so many years which it may pop its head at some point here uh, and you'll understand why um the earliest uh documented um, indication that uh, they have found of this 
drug is in a, sort of a pharmacopoeia medical textbook by a Persian scholar uh, in the uh, 11th century. That's their earliest documented text that they have regarding this stuff. Uh, a lot of scholars argue that uh, evidence of the use of GAT can be found in the New Testament. I don't know what chapter and I don't know what they're referring to, but that is what they uh, 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 have uh, reported. Um, uh, ancient Ethiopians uh, considered the plant as divine food, while, while the Egyptians used it more uh, for its stimulant effects. And we do know that, and uh, there's some documentation of that. They used it in a, what's, what, what you can call a metamorphic process and uh, to transcend into uh, apotheosis, okay? Apotheosis. Okay, uh, what apotheosis means is to become godlike. So <laughs> it was used to become godlike. Uh, I'm not sure how they must have used high doses. Uh, I have seen people on this stuff, uh, and uh, but not chronically, uh, which we'll get into. Uh, recently, over the last oh I don't know uh, uh, the, the later part of 20th century and this century. Uh, because uh, this stuff needs to be chewed fresh, okay, it was always retained to the local populations, okay? And, uh, but because of uh, good, trans good cheap transportation, distribution, uh, uh, it's no longer exclusive to the nations that it originated from and the uh, native regions. It's spreading to Western countries. Uh, and uh, mainly that's because of the mass exodus of a lot of these places, the Yemenis, Ethiopians, Saudis even. And, uh, uh, but again, there's a, a still a limitation because how fresh can it be to achieve psychotropic effect, okay? It recently did turn up in North America, Europe, uh, uh, in the last 30, 40 years, uh, maybe a little longer, uh, because it, like I said, uh, a large uh, influx of immigrants and refugees from countries like Somalia, Ethiopia, Yemen, and uh, uh, this was really easy to do because of a relatively cheap air transportation and expensive other routes of transportation and so forth, okay? Um, it's been reported in Great Britain, Italy, uh, Canada, obviously the United States, Australia, New Zealand, and even as far back as, uh, as far east as Hungary. Uh, the reference to this stuff uh, in the West is Abyssinian tea, uh, African salad, katha, chat, cat, mira, oat, um, uh, quadka, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, quadka, it's Q-U-A-A-D-K-A, -A -A and kat, uh, Q-A-T. Uh, this, this is how people often refer to it, uh, mostly in the West, okay? The plant was uh, first described, uh, and we can say Western literature, scientific literature, uh, by a Swedish uh, botanist. Uh, his name was Peter uh, Forskall, okay, uh, in the 1760s, okay? He described the plant, okay, and uh, that was in uh, 17, uh, I'm not sure, but sometime in the 1760s, and uh, Katha Edulis, okay? And he first described it at that point, and uh, about 10 years later, uh, his companion, another guy on the expedition, uh, named it Cat, okay? Uh, when you look at the plant, the fresh leaves contain over 40 different compounds, okay? Uh, a lot of these might have uh, psychotropic effects, and uh, we don't know, uh, but it has over 40 different compounds. The one we're interested in is the alkaloids, okay? But it also has flavonoids, sterols, amino acids, vitamins, minerals, and some other stuff, okay? Um, the first attempt to identify 
the sort of active uh, uh, ingredient in this uh, plant was in the 1880s, okay, by two guys. And uh, their names were Garok and uh, Flockiger. Garok and Flockiger in the 1880s, they attempted to identify the active uh, psychotropic ingredient, uh, psychoactive compound uh, in this stuff, and they named it Katin, K-A-T-I-N, Katin. Later on, in uh, late 1920s, 1930, by uh, another scientist in the West, uh, this was identified as what's called nor pseudo -ephedrine. Does that sound familiar to you, pseudofed? nor pseudoephedrine and what this is it is an ephedra does that sound familiar to you ephedrine ephedra what is ephedra that is malhung okay it's uh, one of the active alkaloids in a chinese plant that's been used for five thousand years and this is very intimately related to uh, amphetamines and uh, really in many ways uh, uh, the start of a uh, well uh, the amphetamine uh, you know we, we've had amphetamine epidemics in this country so, and abuse and misuse going back into the 30s okay and all of this started uh, from uh, uh, using ephedra as a decongestant uh, and it doesn't really work that well and uh, at that time uh, in 1930 when uh, the psychoactive ingredient uh, was described uh, by this guy named wolf uh, as nor pseudoephedrine which is a type of ephedra or mao hung alkaloid uh, uh, he was in search of the same kind of thing right the decongestant uh, to be able to uh, uh, it was an issue of uh, market shares uh, scarcity of the original product attempting to synthesize uh, a, a synthetic uh, Mao Hong um, and we will get into all of this but this is why this plant is interesting and important so that was in 1930 but all of that time uh, after Catton was described as the active uh, neurotropic uh, or, uh, um, uh, you know, super tentorial uh, ingredient in this plant, um, there was always a question uh, as far as this being the major active component, it didn't seem to be able to uh, explain uh, uh, that uh, the stimulant effect, uh, you know, this captain was insufficient to explain the stimulant and pharmacological effect and properties of this plant. Okay, so we have this plant identified about 50 years uh, uh, before. Uh, actually, the plant was described 100 years, 130 years before. Uh, it took uh, quite a bit of time here from when it was first described uh, to be able to identify the active ingredient as cat, 1880s, and 1930, 31, 32, somewhere around there, it was finally more specifically described as nor pseudoephedrine, which is uh, an ephedra, uh, which is mao hung, uh, and, and it's an alkaloid of mao hung. And uh, at that point, um, th this was sort of labeled as the active ingredient uh, responsible for the stimulant effect of this plant with some reservation because it didn't seem to be able to explain uh, all of the uh, psychotropic stimulant effects of this medication of this plant. Okay, we moved from there uh, and it took until uh, 1975 um, to uh, uh, and it was a United Nations uh, narcotics laboratory uh, that described uh, the second uh, active ingredient, which uh, uh, is also an alkaloid and it's cathinone. Okay, and now we go uh, remember all of the legal highs that we're discussing many of them are synthetic 
half an ounce aimed at sort of uh, getting through the legal system, a cheap production method, uh, and uh, creating an amphetamine or cocaine-like hike, a uh, high uh, in addition to the sort of uh, uh, hallucinogenic effects, if possible, right? These are all based on the second active ingredient of this drug, cathinol. So uh, we got cathine uh, and we have cathinol. And in 1975, this stuff was identified in a United Nations laboratory and uh, they showed it's seven to 10 times more potent than cathine. But here's the thing, it degrades rapidly. Now we understand the need to chew fresh cat leaves to get the high. Now we understand why uh, the distance and time uh, to get this stuff over long distances made it so this stuff didn't spread like wildfire all over the planet uh, until recently where uh, it is uh, <clears throat> um, uh, seen in the West mainly because of immigrants, uh, indigenous to the regions that uh, uh, use this stuff, okay? Um, uh, so originally it was uh, developed for therapeutic purposes and it ended up finding its way uh, as an antidepressant and an anorectic drug, weight loss drug. And this is interesting because the search was really uh, for uh, decongestant uh, to compete with uh, ephedra, uh, which was, you know, they were trying to get the Chinese out of the market for this stuff and have a synthetic version of the same thing. And uh, this stuff is garbage in that way, uh, as is really ephedra, and it wasn't really working that well. And uh, so it was marketed as an antidepressant anorectic drug. <clears throat> And uh, there was derivatives isolated from this. And th that itself is interesting because mild depression at that time to be able to get this stuff through the FDA uh, early on in the 30s and so forth, there wasn't rigorous testing. In fact, the label mild depression, there was no DSM uh, that you could say, hey, there's been a lot of rigorous discussion studies uh, to formalize these definitions of let's say depression. It was sent to a guy that was well known. He published a, a kind of a garbage paper that was not rigorous. FDA accepted it and so forth. And, you know, we saw uh, uh, this happening with uh, other uh, amphetamines and we'll get to that. So uh, there was derivatives of uh, uh, this stuff and uh, uh, as it was kind of pushed out for this antidepressant anorectic uh, uh, they started to see minor misuse potential EPH was uh, one of these and it was supposed to be marketed as an antidepressant and it displayed an extremely strong addictive potential okay with a cocaine like stimulus uh, much more uh, potent than cocaine or the original cathinone it was a derivative that was synthesized okay and uh, this resulted in a lot of uh, misuse and abuse it's funny uh, I mean, you know this is some time back but the street name was jeff it showed up in the soviet union and then the usa and uh, it's been uh, implicated in a lot of uh, intoxications and issues uh, in the 20th century we come all the way back up to the 2000s and uh, at that time we start to see cathinone itself uh, uh, the first time it uh, sort of became a little bit of an issue, it was sold in Israel and it was sold as a natural psycho stimulant and an aphrodisiac. And it was called Hagi, Hagi Gat, Hagi Gat. And uh, it was sold in 200 milligram capsules as a stimulant, okay? Uh, keep in mind uh, something I didn't mention, that cathinone, okay, is now scheduled as a, uh, DEA uh, Schedule 1 and uh, 
that's for cathinone and cathine is a schedule four drug the schedule one drug uh, for the dea has no uh, ma medical therapeutic benefit and high abuse potential okay and it goes down the list in that same way okay let's get into a little bit of, of the epidemiology and then pharmacology uh, of this stuff um, uh, we know a little bit about the history now uh, so the chewing of the plant leaves uh, it's for their pleasurable stimulant effects uh, it is a habit that's widespread in the uh, geographical regions where this stuff grows uh, the estimate is five to ten million people uh, chew this stuff every single day in yemen for example uh, we do know that 60 percent of the Males and 35% of the females uh, were found to be GAT users um, and they chewed it daily uh, for long periods in their lives, okay? And it uh, has stimulating effects and some degree of euphoria. Um, traditionally, as we discuss, it's been uh, a socializing drug. Uh, it's mainly a recreational drug uh, in these countries. And uh, as discussed, farmers, and agricultural and other laborers use it for reducing physical fatigue and increasing stamina. Uh, lorry drivers, long uh, haul drivers uh, use it for uh, staying awake and high school students use it for improving uh, attention. We do know also that children as young as 10 years old start to use. Okay, let's get started on the effects of this stuff. Uh, the main effect of this stuff, uh, chewing cat, are on the central uh, and peripheral ner nervous system and on the gastrointestinal system. Uh, so those are the three really main uh, effects on this stuff. In terms of pharmacokinetics, it takes about one hour for this stuff to take effect. And remember, cathinone, uh, the leading uh, active ingredient uh, is degraded rapidly. Um, and that was one of the reasons why uh, uh, you have to chew the fresh leaves, okay? Subjective effects of uh, uh, chewing this stuff, uh, which takes about an hour, uh, is a state of euphoria and elation, okay, uh, with feelings of uh, increased alertness and arousal. Uh, this is followed uh, by a stage of uh, being extremely loquacious, uh, uh, vi vivid discussions, excited mood. Uh, uh, the user's thinking is sort of a uh, from what it's described and talking to a couple of the users is sort of flooded by uh, ideas, a lot of thought, but uh, uh, and a lot of excitement, but uh, concentration actually becomes difficult. OK, uh, however, at the end of a cat session, uh, you know, the usual sessions they have in the indigenous areas, <clears throat> users are <clears throat> may experience some depression, irritability, uh, and even difficulty uh, sleeping, okay? Uh, so uh, let's run through some of the acute effects of using this stuff and uh, also discuss some of the long-term or chronic use of uh, effects. You know, uh, acute effects, uh, I already described it in general, uh, but uh, relief of fatigue, uh, increased alertness, uh, reduced need for sleep, mild euphoria and excitement, improved ability to communicate, being very loquacious, but not concentrate. That's what's gone. Uh, also on the peripheral nervous system, you get tachycardia, hypertension, moderate uh, hyperthermia, your temperature goes up, okay? Uh, mydriasis, uh, blurry, uh, blurry vision, okay? Your pupils dilate. Uh, uh, anorexia, dry mouth, constipation. Remember we said one of the more prominent acute effects is uh, on the gastrointestinal system. Uh, and uh, at really high doses, we know people can have psychotic reactions, okay? Uh, you also have irritability, uh, depressed mood at the end of uh, use or when this stuff sort of dissipates out of your essential nervous system, uh, lethargy, sleep state, uh, long-term effects, okay, what uh, they have seen, and there's quite a bit of studies in this in different uh, 
areas you see malnutrition uh, you see psychotic reactions after chronic use uh, irritative disorders of the upper uh, gi including gastritis and, and enteritis okay uh, you see uh, cardiovascular disorders you see hemorrhoids you see uh, male sexual dysfunction <coughs> Uh, you see um, periodontal disease uh, and mucosal lesions. Uh, that's with uh, chronic use. Um, let's take something else uh, into uh, consideration here, okay? Um, uh, uh, this stuff is of huge cultural and economic importance and has a major in impact, okay? Uh, in Somalia, um, uh, for cat, uh, the demand is so heavy, okay, that uh, 20 tons, which is $800,000 worth in U.S. dollars, and this was some years back, 20 tons were shipped from daily from Kenya uh, before it was banned, okay, and eventually all the farmers protested, okay, and uh, I think it was removed uh, in one Somalian city, uh, there was the trade was upwards of three hundred thousand dollars a day. The average user, the males, spend a large part of their week procuring this stuff. Okay, and uh, this has profound, huge uh, social impact on their family life, right? Uh, and rearing children and their personal economics. So when you're spending a large portion of your week procuring this stuff for your daily after work uh, coffee and tea chat sessions, it's going to impact your personal life as well as uh, your economics. In the USA, uh, last number I saw was this stuff goes for about three to five hundred dollars a kilo okay a bundle of leaves uh sometime back 10 15 years ago was selling for uh, 30 to 50 dollars uh, a bundle okay and uh, uh there was a point where in upstate new york uh, i believe uh, the dea had uh an operation and they gathered like 40 people uh, and arrested them and 25 tons of cat was confiscated that, that came in from uh, uh, Africa. Okay. Um, let's talk a little bit about the <clears throat> long-term toxic effects of this stuff or even really uh, some of it is not even long-term. It's short-term and long-term just uh and some of it we covered in the acute and chronic reactions but uh, it's important to really uh, put this into perspective okay you know we talked about tachycardia uh, but palpitations hypertension uh arrhythmias vasoconstriction remember it's uh, uh has a, a huge sympathetic uh response okay uh myocardial infarctions heart attacks are quite common uh, with this stuff and there's a pretty uh, good uh, association established uh, through a lot of data gastrointestinal systems dry mouth uh, we talked about cons uh, constipation uh, we uh, uh, talked about the dental caries periodontal disease chronic gastritis uh, hemorrhoids paralytic ileus weight loss malnutrition uh, upper gastrointestinal malignancies are found with this uh, there's also effects on the liver okay fibrosis and cirrhosis uh, urine people get uh, genital urinary retention uh, uh, urinary retention from using this stuff uh, uh, impotence libido changes uh, obstetric changes you get uh, low birth weights stillbirths impaired lactation uh, and metabolic endocrine system uh, you get hyperthermia uh, perspiration hyperglycemia uh, ocular effects we already discussed a little bit uh, uh, blurred vision um, uh, dilation of the pupils uh, central nervous system dizziness impaired cognitive function um, fine tremors insomnia headaches uh, psychiatric effects lethargy irritability anorexia psychotic reactions uh, depression 
and uh, sort of these vivid dreams that they get. They've done also studies with users in the West, with immigrants in the UK, some uh, in some of the other European countries, and they seem to have also uh, more mental health issues than the average person that does not use this stuff. So overall, you know, what can we say about this? Uh, what is the uh, 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 withdrawals like? Uh, well, one of the things that we want to say, for the most part, it's psychological, okay? And it's pretty mild. Nevertheless, you know, uh, is this stuff good? Is this stuff bad? Uh, one of the main consequences of, of this stuff is uh, uh, the cathinone and uh, international market uh, that has been created for synthetic uh, creation of uh, this stuff that is much more potent that has caused a lot of problems, including regulation and law enforcement. All right. That we do also know in the local areas. You have to keep in mind that this is also an issue because it is uh, of profound cultural significance. Right. And, uh, uh, you know, you can't just tell people, hey, this stuff is bad. Stop using it. OK, I'm going to stop. Give you a lot of information. Uh, this stuff is going to really uh, connect. Uh, you know quite a bit about GATT now. Uh, this stuff is really going to connect with you. The idea of cathinones when you read about synthetic cathinones, uh, which are amphetamine like substances and uh, a huge problem that this stuff has created over the last 20, 30, 40 years. And we will get into that into the next video. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something out of it. If you did like it, please don't forget to press subscribe and the like button uh, in addition don't forget about our um, patreon account and uh, i will see you shortly bye bye